Right guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. In this video I'm just going to be showing you how to change the free up bearings in your DT Swiss XD drive uh, free hub body. So I'll go ahead, I'll run through the steps. Right, so here we have the wheel in question. This just happens to be a DT Swiss X1900 uh, wheel. Obviously using a SRAM cassette. It's using this SRAM free hub body, XD free hub body. So this use a free pull free hub body on this one. Now, first job you've got to do is remove your cassette. Now, if you've had the free hub body off before, and you know it comes off all right, so you can just remove your cassette out of the way and you'll be able to pull the free hub body off. If you haven't had the free hub body off before, then I'll just show you a way of removing it, as long as it's not seized on there, that is. Now, what you want to do is go about, just remove your cassette as you normally would. So, we just crack this undone to start with. So we get this, get it undone. What you need to do is undo it enough. So just slackens it off. So you know you can remove the cassette off it afterwards. Right, once we slacken the lock ring off, then what you can go ahead and do is lay the wheel on the ground and then put your hands both sides of the cassette and pull up on it, like so. And being as you've got the cassette on there, you've got enough leverage with your hands to be able to pop the freer body off. Now the freer body is obviously inside the cassette. So if I remove it like so the free air body is still in there so now what you need to do because you slackened off the lock ring you can now get your lock ring tool back on there and you should be able to undo that with your ratchet just carry on undoing it or undo it by hand then you can get the free air body out of the cassette right so once you've removed your cassette from your free air body you're just left with the component pieces, you can set there and you've got the free hub body as you can see with the end cap now what you want to do is when you just got rid of your end cap you can see the bearing in there there's one in the end and there's one in the opposite end down in there so all you do is stick it on your finger and it should be lovely and smooth to spin not really notchy and gravelly like this one is it barely moves bearings are almost given up in it that one on that end you barely turn it and that one in the other end is no better you stick it on your finger you can turn it it's all notchy doesn't even spin so that's where the bearings are so what we're after is swapping these two bearings out now the best thing to do is just degrease your free up body get rid of all the dirt and everything off it to start with before you go ahead and remove the bearings right so I've just wiped the free hub body off as you can see on the outside just get rid of the bulk of the grease or anything and the dirt now what we're after doing is removing this bearing in here now down inside there you'll see in here there's a collar in there so what you want to do is you need to move that collar over to one side now you don't want to use a screwdriver or anything metal down in here to prise that over if it's a bit tight and you can't do it with your finger because you'll damage that ever so slightly if you put a burr on it then when you go to put it back on the shaft of the wheel sticking out the wheel you wonder why it doesn't go back on because you put a burr on here so don't go and stick anything sharp in there and try and prise it over because you'll damage it so what you want to do if you can't move it with your finger left and right then you want to use something plastic or rubber in there 
just put in there like the end of a screw, small screwdriver, the opposite end, the handle, and then just push it over like so, and then it'll move over. You can see it's moved over. What you need to do is move it over enough so when you look down from this end where the three pulls are, see this is a three pull version, you look down inside there and you see that just there there's an edge sticking out. So you need to move it across enough so you can see an edge there. And then what you do is you get a punch like so. And then you just put that down inside like that and it rests on there. So you can move the uh, collar over a bit a little bit more, not a lot. If you put that down in there like so it was resting on there. Then you can hit the end here with a hammer and just tap it round. Then all you do is move the collar over slightly and tap it again. Move the collar again, tap it. You just need to tap it around the bearing. And then slowly as it starts to move down, out, the collar will become really loose and slack in there. So you don't have to worry about moving the collar around because it would be really slack. So what we'll do zoom it out a little bit for you like so I can see the bearing down in there so I'll just tap it like I said like that then move the collar over a little bit Now the collar's gone slack inside, I'll show you. The collar inside now is slack, it moves really easily just after a few hits. So you don't have to worry about trying to prise it out of the way. So you know the bearing's coming out, so now you just give it a tap and just move around to another side. And you know you're replacing these bearings because they're bad, so you're not doing it any harm. You've got to get the old bearing out. Obviously you're not going to do this to a bearing that's perfectly good. You're only doing it when they need replacing. So when you turn it over as you can see it starts coming out. So you just keep tapping away at it like so. Going round until the bearing comes out. Obviously when you've got it so far down like so, it's level, obviously you're holding it on the the floor like so, so it's not going to come out so what you want to do is then, once you've got it down flush with it is you can just hold it up off, the, off of the surface and you can just hold the punch in your hand like so, rest it on the edge then tap it like so and then as you can see out it comes so you're left with the bearing and there's the collar so now we go ahead and get the one down inside here right so to remove the bearing that's down inside here there's a circlip that's holding it in at the bottom so you just need to get yourself a pair of circlip pliers, like so, straight. Then you just look for the two holes in the circlip down in the bottom there. And then what you want to do is just locate them and squeeze the circlip. Then remove it like so. Put that. And try not to do that, otherwise you have to go and pick it off off the floor. I'm going to say put it down gently without losing it off the end of there, but that didn't quite work. So now I've got the circle clip off, with that bearing in there, the bottom you can just see it in there. Need to get that out of there. So. Just turn it up like so, place it on the on a hard surface, preferably a block of wood. 
And then you just get your hammer again. And just do the same thing again. You can see the edge of the bearing sticking out ever so slightly. That is, that is the edge of the bearing in there. You just see it. So it's enough to just re rest your punch on there. And just keep going round, tapping it a bit at a time, like so. I can feel it moving, so in this case of gently tapping it, you've got to keep moving it around because you don't want it to go, you don't want it to, you, no point in hitting one side because it's not coming out square, it's got to come out nice and straight, otherwise it won't come out. You just get it wedged in there. As you see, there's the bearing, it's just dropped down to the outside there where the other one was. So if you get it on your on your end of your finger, like so, and try and get it so as it's resting in this end. So then what you've got to do is when it's resting in there, is then Rest it in place in there, then you've got to tap it out of your tap it out of this end again. So it's gone down, it's dropped down through, and now it's resting here where the other bearing was. Obviously, you're not going to be able to pull it straight out because it's the same size as the, the bearing that was in there. So it's got to come past where this one was sat. So you've got to press it, push it into place in there just so it's resting on the edge enough so you can get it started and then you can knock it down through right as you see the bearings just started there so once it's started in there it's level it's not coming out crooked then you can just carry on tapping it and just keep moving the free up down And obviously, like I said before, when it's flush, there. Then, if you can hold it up off the, off the, uh, your block of wood, then just tap it out. So there we have both bearings removed. There's nothing in there now, it's just an empty freer body. So you can go ahead and clean this up inside, degreaser in there, wipe, clean it, wipe it all around with a piece of cloth or rag till it's all dried out and it's clean. Right, so once you've cleaned out the inside of your freer body there and degreased it and dried it out, then what you want to do is just get some grease and grease up down in the bottom there where the bearing is going to sit down in that area and then grease up just here where this bearing is going to sit because you've got to knock this bearing down into the inside first so if you just run some grease around there as well then when the bearing goes in just gives it a helping hand and then down in the bottom where the bearing is going to sit put, put some grease round in there first as well We're ready to reinstall the, uh, the bearing. Now, always go for good quality bearings, good quality names, branded names. Don't buy any cheap bearings because they don't last five minutes. So it's, not, it's just not worth it, it's false economy. So, what we want to do is we need to fit the bearing back in there again. So, so you need to get it down in there again. You need to rest it 
on the top there again, make sure it's square on there. And we just need to get that to go through there first so we can do it, hit it into the bottom. So for that you need an appropriate socket. So 17mm socket to so exactly the same size as the outside of the bear in there. And then get yourself a soft blow hammer. And then making sure it's square on there. Just gently tap it in, checking that it's going in straight. See there. It's just a case of tapping that through. Until it disappears down inside. Like you can see. So the bearing's gone in there. Right, so once you've got the bearing down inside with your socket, then you can get it in place down in there with your finger just push it in so it's square and then you can tap that bearing into place in there just put your socket down through there again and just lightly go round and tap in obviously making sure that it's going in square and you're not hitting it in crooked at all You can't hit it in too far, it'll just stop when it hits the bottom, then stop hitting it. So that's that bearing installed in there, in the bottom. And ready to put the clip back on, sur clip. Right, so before we put the uh, sur clip back in, what you want to do is get some grease and your brush there and just paint it over the the face of the bear in there and that's just so I know it's got a seal on it but it's just stopped the water helps stop the water getting in and it also helps stop the sewer clip getting stuck or rusted on when it's in there so once you've done that it's just a case of getting your pliers again locating the sewer clip on there then just squeeze it together and you can lower it back in you can drop it in position in the bottom and then just check that it's in a little screwdriver to make sure it's in place Once you're happy it's back in there again and ready we can go ahead and get this bearing in. Right so before we go ahead and put the new bearing in the end there what you want to do is obviously your, your spacer there is put some grease on one end of it there like so. Put some grease down now you've got the clip sewer clip in just put some liberal amount of grease there in the bottom and by doing that it just helps to stick that in place temporarily while you so you can put it in place like so get it in there and you just rest in the bottom there and then it stops it falling in there when you're trying to hit this bearing in it stops it falling over or anything with a little bit of grease on it so then just grease the outside the bearing for this end like so and make sure you got a little bit extra grease around where it's going to sit just help it on its way in and same again for this one obviously you've already knocked one through there earlier so the inside bearing so same thing so you just want to make sure it's on there 
square to start with and then same thing again get your socket and your, and your hammer and just make sure again it's going in square you're not hitting it in crooked making sure the collar hasn't fell over inside and again you just tap it down gently until it meets the collar inside and the tone will change when it's hit the bottom so there we have it installed right so once you've got the bearings in both sides there just obviously check that it's spinning okay before you go ahead and refit it so once you're happy with that you can go ahead and refit this on the bike and before you do what you want to do is put some little bit of grease on each one of the pulls there because this is a three pull hub just make sure that you grease those and make sure that before you put this back on you want to put some grease just on the end there like so and then also put some grease down inside in the inside of the collar there and make sure that the collar is lined up if it's out of line just by a fraction then when you go ahead put this on the axle then you wonder why it won't go back on that collar has got to be lined up with the bearings so make sure at the same time that's lined up and put some grease down in there as well and obviously grease the shaft that's coming out of the wheel right so once you're ready to put your free hub back on your wheel what you want to do is make sure that you grease the shaft that's sticking out the wheel a smear of grease all over that like so and then your collar that was on the spacer collar there that was on the uh, shaft anyway the beginning make sure you just grease that as well slide that back on like so slide it right down to the bottom it just rests against the wheel bearing and then make sure you've got like I said some grease up inside your free hub you're ready to go ahead and slide that back on now it should go back on easily if it doesn't then like I said the spacer in between the two bearings is slightly out of line it's only got to be ever so slightly and it won't go back on so make sure it's lined up then you should be able to slide it on like so and just push it down to the bottom like so and turn it anti-clockwise like that that's the free hub back on there like I said just put some grease around there on the end cap and just up inside it there just helps it stop it getting stuck on and you just pop that back in place like so and then you're ready to go ahead refit your cassette and make sure you grease you put plenty of grease on where the uh, thread is and up inside your cassette as well so you don't want that getting stuck on there right so there's a cassette back on there so it's ready to refit back into your bike right so there's the steps complete for you so if you found the video helpful remember to give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel for more cycle related content till the next one ride safe and i'll see you then